And as I mentioned then, Bosson at the table, zero points. Uh, they've been, any, everyone and, and anyone has been slating them over the last 24 hours. Uh, you weren't with us yesterday, Craig, uh, for your reaction. A lot of people, for some reason, are desperate to hear what you have to say about it all. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll never get that in my house. Nobody's <laughs> <laughs> desperate to tell me to shut up. It's going well, isn't it? Um, going well for old Eric, isn't it? Goodness me. Is he on a plane yet to Amsterdam or what? Wow. He's in hiding. He's in hiding in Amsterdam. Yesterday was a new low, though, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a new low. Before, the one thing I would say, before we start about the Glazers, before we start about Motto and Arnold and all these people and previously Edward Wood, and before we talk about recruitment and money, and, and there's been a lot of money spent in Man United, mm -hmm. just, just badly. By, by people who shouldn't have been spending the money, non-football people, and hence they are where they are. But before we go down that route, let's just say to a man, those players are a disgrace to their profession. And I'll tell you why. We can all lose games, can all have bad performances, but individually, individually, would any of those Brentford players really have got in a Man United team? Individually. <laughs> but they are super hungry. They want to be in the Premier League second season around. I mean, Shaw's an international. You know, Maguire's played in World Cup semi-finals. Dallow's an international. Jaden Sancho's not worth a million, never mind a hundred million at the moment. Marcus Rashford, we talked in the end of it. PSG want him. That was the discussion we had at the end of the week. 120 million, their valuation. He wouldn't go to one of the newly promoted teams in the Premier League. And obviously Ronaldo's up front and he's frustrated and he not, never shakes the manager's hand and blah, blah, blah. That's been a soap, that's been a soap story. Uh, and David De Gea had an absolute nightmare. But how can you, even without, even if you say this is a bad Man United team, I get it. I get it. It's an awful Man United team, but it's Brentford. No second balls, no closing down, no fight, no passion. Where's this pressing game that Eric Ten Hag said we're going to be seeing this, this oh, his new tactics. Where, where, where's it been? Just outplayed by Brentford, outfought, outfought. That doesn't need 100, that doesn't need 500 million in the transfer market to put right. Mm. It, that doesn't need new players, that needs new attitude. That needs new attitude. And, and quite frankly, these players, it just seems these players, for some reason, I don't know, they just are reluctant to go on a field and do the basics. I mean, it's quite scary. I, I, I get it. I understand they need a centre half, and a midfielder, they need this, and a striker, they need this. But you don't need that to outrun, outfight, and outplay Brentford. You don't. You might do if you're Nottingham Forest. You might do if you're Bournemouth and Fulham and Southampton and Everton, all those teams that maybe Brentford were... Fat, but it's Manchester United with international footballers across the board. That's not a lack of talent. That's a lack of application. So does it matter who's in charge? Could you have Klopp? Could you have Guardiola? Could you have Ancelotti? Could you have anyone there? Is it a complete and utter lost cause in that sense because of the players? I don't know. I mean, I mean ultimately, he's going to have to get a lot of them out. That's going to take time. On the other side of the coin is, yeah, you've got a new manager coming in, what you got? You've got a five-foot-nine centre-half, you've got a substitute left-back and a free transfer from Brentford. Who is a good player, Christian Eriksen? He is a good player. There's no doubt about that. But he's not going to solve all your problems. But that's all they've given him so far. But I don't need new signings to outrun and outfight and, and close Brentford down. And I don't need that. I can do that. I should be able to do that with this team. And, and, and they were an utter embarrassment. Shaka, I think out of every pundit on this show, I would say you have the most optimistic persona. But even with that, <laughs> it's very difficult, isn't it, to pay any sort of positive picture for Manchester United going forward and how they're going to fix this short term. Oh, sure, sure it's easy to paint a positive picture. It's always darkest before the dawn. Surely it cannot get <laughs> any worse than this. <laughs> It cannot. We were saying on Friday, it, 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 like, well, you can't, it can't get any worse. And then, then what happened on Saturday? Yeah, well, no. No, I really mean it. It yep. cannot. Let, let's be honest. And, 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 and here's, I, 
I take every single one of, of Craig's points, and, and he's absolutely right. Um, but you saw, you saw something play out in, during, during that game, and I often talk about Manchester United's arrogance. Okay, David De Gea at four for the opening two goals, and, and at the best of times in a league like this, you do not give the opponent, any opponent, that kind of a head start. But after the second goal goes in, Ronaldo, one to way Ronaldo, by the way, is the only player who is, who is kind of remonstrating with everyone else and saying one goal turns this tide, one goal changes the momentum. Everybody else goes, in, goes into an absolute shell. That speaks about the lack of leadership both on the field, and I'm looking at Ten Hag off the field because he could have been getting that message to, to his players at, at the same time. As far as it getting better for, for Manchester United and your question about whether Klopp or Guardiola can, can, can turn this around, let's keep in mind the, the chain of managers that Manchester United have had since, since Alex Ferguson. David Moyes, Louis van Gaal, Jose Mourinho, and as much as, as, as Mourinho and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer finished second, I, I, I thought that, that was more by luck than, than, than by design, particularly the second time around with Solskjaer and the pandemic, et cetera, et cetera. And it, it, to me, it speaks to far deeper problems. And I know everybody's been going on about the Glazers and, and everybody else. But if you're Manchester United, even if you have another billion dollar war chest and you, you go out to spend... Who wants to come to Old Trafford? Mm. Not, because of, not because of lack of, of, of Champions League football, but when you look at the players who've come and, and left and, and, and how they've regressed. If you're Frankie de Jong, why do you leave Barcelona to go to Manchester United when you've seen Marcus Rashford regress in the way that he has? When you've seen a World Cup winner, winner in Paul Pogba regress as he has? When you've seen Bruno Fernandes regress? When you've seen Jadon Sancho regress? That speaks to far greater issues than, than just the Glazers or the money that, that they spend. And, and I'm afraid there's a toxicity in that club that I, I, I'm, I, I really don't know what the fix is. And it's deep-rooted, and it'll be a long time in the correcting. They're on the plane Liverpool next. I know. To be fair. More good, more good I, news for Eric. I know. I Liverpool. Know. Liverpool next. I mean, it's the early days. What we... <laughs> I mean, it's early days. That, that's the only, that's the only Frank. That's the only crumb of comfort I can give them. It's it's, it's early days, but I, I mean, they're going to they're going to bury this manager quickly at this rate. The thing is, this is crazy. They they are making records of nightmares. I think they touched the bottom of it. Where again, as said Shaka, the toxicity is so big that you don't know how to resolve it. And Ten Hag cannot do almost anything if the players don't want to run. They don't want to run. It's why he wants he wants them to run. You know, at Carrington, you know, after the game because they didn't run enough. But uh, it's like all the the will that you need to become. A leader to to change something in your faith doesn't exist anymore in any soul, any player's soul. So it's complicated for Ten Hag to do anything. Last year, the tree who, who, who hid the, the which hid the forest, as we say in French, was De Gea. And when De Gea is not good, that's the result you have. That's what it is because De Gea made miracles last season. Otherwise, Manchester United would not have done what they did last season. So, in one game, because, because there are at the nightmare, you see everything you should have seen last season. And we were mentioning about the spirit, about the tactic, about the, the will of the players. There is nothing. Again, how to sort that problem out is going to be a problem. I don't know, I don't know if Ten Hag can cope with the situation very quickly, but they need to react because otherwise they can be relegated because there is nothing. They was the, the, the hair's a problem from. The hair's a problem. I tell you why. Not because he's not because he's a bad goalkeeper. Because he's, he he resurrected his career in the last eighteen months. But he's not very good with the ball at his feet. And unfortunately, Ten Hag's one of those managers that wants to do it, wants to, to to build out and play that way and put him under pressure, put his keeper under pressure like Ederson that gets under pressure, like Allison gets under pressure. Uh, and I don't think he handles that uh, very well. It was interesting that he's already said. Uh, they just, Ten Hag's already distanced himself to some extent by saying, 
they uh, they just didn't follow the plan, mm. which 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 I'm 100 percent behind because yeah. clearly he never sent them out to play that way, uh, and he's obviously not worried about losing some of them because he's just going to say. I'm, they're not burying me. Right. They are not burying me. I am going to be intrigued by how, his next lineup because I mean, he's going to be throwing darts at the wall to see who plays in that team. If you're Rafael Varane, I mean, I know Rafael Varane's not the, he's not, he's not the most, you know, when you see him coming out from the back with the ball, it looks a little bit uncomfortable, but he's a good defender and he's fast and he's big. But he's, he must be sitting there going, I've won a World Cup, Champions Leagues, I've won all those things, and I can't get in that back four. Right. I mean, he must be kicking Ten Hag's door down and saying, "There's more to there's more to football than Selke playing out from the back. Sometimes you just got to downright defend." Right. But my God, I mean, I don't think even in his worst nightmares, the new manager thought it was going to be as bad as it is. But there has to be. I mean, I can't. I, it's, it's so bad. I can't put my finger on it. When I just look at, Lee, uh, at Shaw and Maguire and all these players just looking at each other, Fred. Pfft. People used to tell, people tell me last year Fred's a really good player. Maybe he is, but just not at this club. Right. This club needs better players. Scott McTominay, right? No, nothing against the boy. He's a worker and a grafter, but he's not. And I know he didn't start yesterday, but he's not. He's not going to be somebody that's quality enough to lead the Manchester United midfield. I mean, it's a bigger mess than even I thought it was, to be honest with you, at this moment in time. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.